Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is going to be on the three types of ketosis. Ketosis is a powerful tool. There's three different categories of it. Some deadly, some not. I'm going to compare and contrast. All right, before I do, make sure you smash that like button for me. It really helps the Google YouTube algorithm. And also put your comments down below. I'm really curious to know what you guys think and future topics for new videos to come. Also hit that bell so you get notifications of new videos that are coming your way as well. All right, so let's dive in. What is ketosis? So ketosis, just to keep it really, really simple, when someone says ketosis, there's a lot of misnomers that we're gonna talk about when it comes to ketoacidosis. So this word tends to get conflated with ketosis. So when someone says, oh, that's so bad, I say, well, what's wrong with burning fat? Because essentially fat, ketosis is a metabolite of fat. I'll break down the biochemistry down below, but it's a metabolite of fat. So I always say, well, what's the problem with burning fat? People look at you like, what? Because there's a lot of misnomer. People don't really know what they're talking about a lot of times. So ketosis is essentially burning fat. And we're taking essential free fatty acids and we're, we're breaking them down into acetyl-CoA. All right, acetyl-CoA is a metabolite of these free fatty acids and that can be broken down into acetoacetate and three hydroxybutyrate. These are powerful ketones and one that comes off of here is also acetone. Acetone is that nail polish smell that you have, people that have are there in ketosis, that nail polish or maybe fruity smell, that's the acetone you're smelling. So these are the big three ketones that come off of our free fatty acid. So free fatty acid to acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA to HMG-CoA, and then these are the big ketones, acetone, acetoacetate, and 3-hydroxybutyrate. Okay, and just to kind of give you guys the biochemistry breakdown there, we'll kind of revisit that in a minute. So ketosis, burning fat, not a problem, that's a good thing. Confusion with ketoacidosis, what's ketoacidosis? This is primarily gonna happen in patients that have type, type one diabetes, okay? So we'll break down what's happening. So type one diabetes or severe liver cirrhosis, a lot of times, type one diabetes. That's the big thing that you're gonna see that happen. Why? Because type one diabetes is typically an environment where insulin levels are what? Very low levels of insulin because it's an autoimmune condition that has killed off the beta cells of the pancreas. These are the cells that produce actual insulin. Type one diabetes, autoimmune, low insulin. So imagine you have this sugar come in or carbohydrate come in, it gets broken down to glucose, then this glucose goes in your bloodstream, blood sugar goes really high. What happens though? That blood sugar cannot get into the cell for fuel. So the body's freaking out because insulin's like the key that goes into the cell that allows that cell to open up and allow glucose to rush in. So the body's freaking out and it's like, what kind of, you know, all the fuel's right there, it can't get in, so it freaks out and starts producing a whole bunch of ketones. So ketones now go up as a result. And the ketones go so high, anywhere between 10 to 20 times higher than normal levels of ketosis, right? Ketones go up, let's just say 20x. 20x higher, 10 to 20x-ish. So the body's freaking out because those ketones do have an acid-like byproduct and they can drop the pH and a lot of our enzymes in our body, they're very pH sensitive so you can go into a coma because of it. That's why ketoacidosis is deadly. We're not increasing our ketones to that same level when we engage in nutritional ketosis, right? There's not a type one diabetic pathophysiology, a low insulin pathophysiology. A lot of times it's the opposite. We're going in ketosis because we have insulin resistance too much and now the cell's numb. Does that make sense? Hope it does. It can be a little bit confusing. So nutritional ketosis, what's the first aspect of nutritional ketosis? First thing is you're actually eating good, like you're getting enough nutrition. You're getting adequate levels of calories. You're getting adequate levels of nutrition. Let me get this cleaned up here. So first things first, what's happening? So we're at nutritional ketosis is adequate nutrition. Adequate nutrition, that's really important. A lot of people can starve themselves or go very low calorie 
and your, your insulin, your pancreas is producing insulin. Now, it's going to produce it in response to carbohydrates first, protein second, fat is pretty insulin neutral. So if you go low calorie, and let's say you cut your calories in half overall, which is not good, right? You're also cutting your carbohydrates in half. And your body's responding to protein as well. So if you go lower calorie, you will have a less, less of an insulin response. So adequate nutrition is really important, right? That's really important. That's nutritional ketosis, okay? And then also we're going to have low carb, and ideally high fat. And this is important because if we don't get enough adequate fat, well, we're gonna have to get the calories either from carbs or proteins. And those types of calories will stimulate insulin. So to have good healthy nutritional ketosis, we have to have adequate nutrition and healthy enough fat to compensate for the lack of calories from the carbs and from the protein. Really, really important. Now, starvation ketosis is essentially why a lot of people do well on a low calorie diet. Low calorie diet, you're decreasing the amount of calories, thus you're decreasing the insulin output. That's part of the reason why it works. So our body partitions fuel all the time. It says, okay, so imagine like the guys at the airport when the planes land, right? They're directing the planes which way to go. So imagine the conductor here is insulin. When insulin's really high, it's telling, hey, go this way, go into the fat cell and get stored for fuel or get stored for a rainy day. Or, hey, go to the mitochondria, go to beta oxidation and get burnt up. So we want to be partitioning our fuel to get burned and to be used for energy. And we need a lower insulin environment for that to happen. Okay. So when we look down below, beta oxidation, free fatty acid gets broken down. Some of the key things we need for these free fatty acids to get broken down is lower insulin, and lower insulin triggers a enzyme called hormone-sensitive lipase. We'll just call it HSL for short. That's really important for breaking down that free fatty acid to acetyl-CoA, to HMG-CoA, to acetoacetate, and then the two other ketones, 3-hydroxybutyrate and acetone. Just note, these guys right here are special because these guys will also go into the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle, or the citric acid cycle for short, is another metabolic pathway that gives us ATP or energy. So when we break down fat, when we use our body fat for fuel, it goes from beta oxidation, which is our free fatty acid, it gets broken down, okay? And then these metabolites, these ketones over here, go into the Krebs cycle, so more energy. So we wanna be able to use these fats for energy. And again, we're not confusing it with ketoacidosis, that's type one diabetes, low, low insulin environment. Nutritional ketosis, we're getting enough nutrition and we're adjusting our macros accordingly so we can have enough calories, enough fat soluble vitamins, while at the same time, not eat enough food that's gonna be insulinogenic or stimulate insulin. And then here's how that happens in the biochemistry. Here's how that is being burnt up. So if you have metabolic issues, I always tend to lean more to insulin resistant type of supporting diets like a keto paleo template. People's sugar consumption has gone from three or four pounds 100 years ago to 130 pounds a year now. So we tend to lean, lean on the fact that more people are insulin resistant than not. So this kind of a template is a great way to start. And again, if you have more metabolic issues or thyroid or hormone issues that could be interplaying with this, it's really important, click down below, reach out to myself and my colleagues so we can help you and assess what's going on under the hood metabolically that could be exacerbating your body's ability to burn fat for fuel. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Hope you enjoy this content. Give me a thumbs up and put your comments down below and hit that bell. You guys have a phenomenal day. Take care. Bye.